Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to give you guys my top five reasons why I believe that beginners of Linux should use Linux Mint as their first Linux distribution of choice. If you happen to be a more advanced user who's okay spending more time getting things to work, or you have very specific needs for your Linux distribution, such as if you're doing penetration testing, then Linux Mint might not be the package you actually want to go with. However, if you are just a standard user, who may be coming from Windows and wants something a little different while keeping the ease of operation in your Linux operating system, then Linux Mint is going to be a really good choice out of the box. Honestly, a lot of the distributions, especially the more popular ones, try to target that market of just the average consumer who wants a computer to work easily and to give you some of those common features that we expect from Windows or Mac computers. So if we go over here to DistroWatch, you'll see that on the page hit rankings over here on the side, Mint has strongly been number one. Uh, I would I want to say for years now. I'm not actually sure when there was a time when Mint wasn't considered the number one in terms of page hits here. Then at number two, you have Debian. Number three is Manjaro. And number four is Ubuntu. So if you don't already know, and you probably don't, Mint and Ubuntu are actually based off of Debian. And what that means is that the core of the operating system is still Debian, but then with Mint and Ubuntu, they like to add on some of their extra features and apps that you have pre-installed in order to make your user experience much smoother. So Debian is known as a distribution for being very safe, secure, and stable, which is obviously going to be a good baseline for a Linux distribution where you want it to just work out of the box. Like with Windows, you install it. Most things work. You don't really need to install too many drivers. Uh, you might install your NVIDIA drivers, but for the most part, in Windows 10, you boot into it and it just kind of works. So that's really what they're trying to go for with Mint, Ubuntu, and honestly, Manjaro as well. Now, on my channel, I've talked about Manjaro. I'm a big fan of Manjaro, uh, which is Arch Linux based. You should be able to see Arch Linux somewhere down here. It's at number 13 right now. Antigos is also Arch based, um, but they kind of are more in the line of making it a little bit more user friendly. Once again, having certain app packages out of the box and having a really clean, nice looking user interface. However, in my experience through the years, I have found that getting everything set up and working properly in Manjaro tends to be a bit more frustrating, especially on an older computer. You might run into some issues, um, but on operating systems like Mint or Ubuntu, it tends to be a little bit smoother. Now, all that I just mentioned was actually my fourth point. So let's go back to number one. Mint and Ubuntu, uh, which are Debian-based systems, tend to get the best support from Linux developers. Because Mint and Ubuntu have really been at the top of the charts for a long time now, uh, I think Ubuntu might have dropped one place or so. But whenever you run a installer package on a Debian-based system, it's a .deb file, .deb for Debian, of course, and you'll have these apps that you can install out there on the internet. A lot of apps you can install in the terminal quite easily using sudo apt install, but then certain ones you have to download and install manually. Now, not every Linux distribution is actually going to have their own custom installer. You might get .deb, a .r uh, RPM, I believe it's called, um, but then that doesn't cover all of the operating systems out there. And then if you have one of those weird, less popular systems, then you might have to go out of your way and do extra steps in order to get things installed. Plus, because most people are running on these mainstream systems like Mint and Ubuntu, most people in the community, uh, including the Linux developers, are going to kind of focus on those types of users. Obviously, when you want to so satisfy your customer base, you want to satisfy people who are on the system that most people are on. So you could kind of think in terms of Windows, uh, if people are creating apps, they're more focused on Windows 7 and above users. Uh, no one really cares about Windows XP or Windows Vista users anymore because those operating systems are outdated, they're less popular, they're fading out of existence. So if you use things that a lot of people use, you're going to get better support for it. And that also applies to channels like mine. Um, I'm mostly talking about Manjaro and I guess now Mint, but I'm not really talking about the distributions that are at rank 20 or 25. Okay, so my second reason, many of the apps that you have in Mint are really good out-of-the-box essentials. 
equipment as a package. Uh, it maybe takes up a little bit more system space than some of the other lightweight distributions have out there, but most of the apps that you have installed out of the box are going to be things you really want anyway, and you won't have to grab them later on. Uh, so for instance, Firefox web browser, that's there out of the box. Uh, Thunderbird, if you like to check your mail on your desktop computer and you're not a fan of Outlook, Thunderbird is a really good choice and it's actually what I've used for years. So having it there by default is great. Uh, Office package, uh, I think a lot of Linux distributions actually have this now. But LibreOffice, it's the best free Office software package out there, and Microsoft Microsoft Office isn't even supported on Linux to begin with, so this is what you've got, and it's really good. Um, so that's why you'll see LibreOffice all over the place. VLC Media Player, out of the box, it's a really good uh, video player. You can also use it for music, podcasts, uh, streams from the internet, if you search around a little bit and learn how. Um, and also, if you're watching a show, it can download subtitles uh, right within the app, so that's really cool. And then if you like to use a lot of web content, multimedia, videos, and possibly Flash games, um, I'm pretty sure that Mint also includes uh, the Flash player out of the box. I'm not sure if that's Adobe or the Peppermint Flash player, but uh, anyway, it should have Flash available out of the box without you needing to install any other plugins. And here's a really big one for me. Uh, so currently I am in Asia, and when I run Manjaro, I tend to get slow responses from the servers, the servers for doing your system updates, and that's a really big deal, because if you're downloading stuff at two or three hundred kilobytes, uh, kilobytes per second, whereas if you're running the Mint with the Mint repositories, which you can easily uh, change to the fastest repositories that are near you, and you can get like five times the speed at like 1.5 megabytes per second or even faster, that's a huge difference. Uh, you don't really want your system updates to take hours, so if you can cut that to like 10, 20 minutes, that's a big deal. And yes, I've played around with reorganizing the, uh, the server mirror list in Manjaro. I tried to figure out the fastest one, and honestly, I haven't really had too much success with it. So dealing with the slow servers, it it can be an issue. So that's that's actually a really big one there. And then number five. Okay, I did mention this before, but it's worth mentioning again. Debian-based systems are known for being very stable. When you run Linux Mint or you run Ubuntu, they're going to be very stable systems. And what I mean by that is it's not going to crash on you when you boot into your system. It's rare to see errors like, oh, your backlight isn't working with your NVIDIA drivers. Most things just tend to work out of the box, and that's a huge deal, especially for someone who is a beginner Linux user, it, really anyone who isn't like the most hardcore of computing experts. You don't want to waste your time sitting on the computer trying to fix stuff when you expect that things should just work. If you're on Windows, it tends to be the case. Most things will just work. And honestly, that's been one of the biggest things holding Linux back in general. When you run a Linux machine, you do run into issues a lot more often, generally speaking. But with Linux Mint, it's not nearly as bad. Uh, if you're just doing typical Office stuff, using LibreOffice Writer as an alternative to Microsoft Office, browsing the web, maybe you even install the Linux Steam and you get that booted up, uh, you're going to have a much smoother time getting things working. So for beginners, it's going to give you faster servers, it's going to be more stable, it's going to have most of what you need out of the box, and you're going to get really great support from the community or possibly developers of the apps that you try to go download and install. Um, and in general, you have minimal compatibility issues and you won't need to go out of your way to install as many uh, of these little plugins and libraries that exist out there because a lot of them are going to be out of the box already installed. In any case, thanks for listening to my rant. I've been Chris, and I will see you guys in my future video content.